Recovery Kids, Pastor Ruth here. Um, it's been a couple weeks. I appreciate you guys hanging tight and sticking with me while uh, we get some things figured out, but I am back and super excited to talk about today's lesson, which is about David and Goliath. Now, I don't know about you guys. You've probably heard this story before. I feel like I've maybe heard this story a million times, but what's really cool is every time that we go through a story that I've familiar with or I've heard before, it's always nice to re-listen to it and re-see what God is going to say. And um, I feel like every time God tells me something different. And so we're starting um, a new portion of our uh, little curriculum, uh, if you want to call it that. And our new session has a brand new faith fact. And our faith fact for today is God makes me brave. So David and Goliath is definitely a story about bravery, but let's start at the beginning. So the Israelite army is facing the Philistines. The Philistines have always been fighting with God's people. It was nothing new. And uh, the Israelites were always scared to fight them because of one giant reason. And that is Goliath, who was a giant, you know, nine feet tall. That's huge. My brother is six, six. And I feel like he's a giant. And so even taller than him, nine feet tall, that's incredible. That's like if you, I don't even know, you taller than LeBron James, taller than all those people. Uh, so Goliath is obviously taunting the Israelite army. The, ar the Israelites are scared to fight. I mean, how are you going to fight someone who's nine foot tall? That's crazy. And so everyone is afraid. And Saul at this point is king. But we've learned that Saul has already messed up by not obeying God. And so God has decided that he's going to have another king come and surpass Saul instead of like his child, as was normal for them back then. You know, if you were a king, typically, you know, your child would take over for you. Or if you didn't have a kid, someone in your family would. Well, David wasn't related to Saul at all. But because Saul had messed up, God wanted David to be king. And where Saul was this, you know, handsome, strong you know, guy who'd fought in armies and things like that. David was just this shepherd boy. And so when we meet him, he actually is the youngest of his family and the smallest of his family. So Samuel goes to anoint um, the new king and God tells him, hey, it's in this family, family of Jesse, go find them. And so um, they all line up, all the brothers line up and Samuel's going through all of them. And he's like, no, you know, it's none of these. It's like, this isn't who God wants me to anoint. Is there anybody else? You don't have any other sons? And David was so insignificant in his own family that they they didn't even bother bringing him when the prophet Samuel said, hey, I'm going to anoint a king out of your family. Line up all your sons. They didn't even bother getting him. He was out in the field dealing with the sheep. They saw him as something so small and something that didn't matter that they didn't even bring him. When a prophet of God said, hey, we're going to anoint the next king from your family. They were certain that it couldn't be David. And I don't know if you felt that way. Um, I'm not the youngest in my family, but sometimes I felt like I did get lost in the shuffle. Um, important things would happen and I wouldn't know about it or because I had moved, you know, about an hour away, you know, I'm always learning about things secondhand. And sometimes it can feel like, you know, man, other people in my family maybe matter more than me or are better at this than me or stronger than me and all these things. And I don't know, maybe David would have counted himself out too. Maybe if his dad had explained, hey, there's going to be a prophet coming and he's going to anoint one of you guys king, like, do you want to come meet him? Maybe David would have felt the same way that I did, which was just, I don't know, I'm probably not the one. You know, my siblings are better. My friends are better. My cousins are better. You know, the neighbor kid's better. God wouldn't choose me. But God did. God chose David. So Samuel anointed him king. And then you would think like, oh, okay, he's going to be king now, right? He doesn't have to do anything else. He can just go right up to Saul and take his crown. Everything's going to be fine. But actually, Samuel anointed him king, and then David went right back to being a shepherd. Nothing changed immediately in David's life. And so David's brothers go off to fight in the war. David stays behind as he still has responsibilities. He's got a job back home, basically. He's got to take care of the sheep. And eventually... David's dad said, hey, I want you to take these supplies and go to your brothers on the battlefield and give this to them. So David takes all the supplies and goes to give it to his brothers. And while he's there, he hears Goliath. Remember that giant nine foot tall? He hears him taunting the Israelite army and essentially taunting 
God because the Israelites are his people. And so Goliath is taunting them, saying, hey, you know, come fight me. How are you afraid? All these things. And David, instead of being afraid like everybody else, he becomes angry and upset. Because how dare Goliath taunt his people and his God? And so David decides that he's going to do something about it. And he goes up to Saul because Goliath has offered a challenge, like, come fight me. And so David goes up to Saul, who's the king at the time, remember still, says, hey, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go fight Goliath. And at first Saul is like, no, you know, you're just a shepherd boy. You haven't even been here for the battles we've done. You just got here. But eventually David wins Saul over and Saul still doesn't believe in him. And he says, you know what? Take my best armor, take my best weapons. And so he loads him up. And I don't know if you've ever seen a Christmas story where like the mom puts the kids in like all the winter clothes and they're like, I can't put my arms down. Like they're, they have too much stuff on. David didn't feel comfortable in anything he was wearing, you know, and David had faced battles before. He'd faced animals, taken down bears, things like that. But he didn't have all this big armor and these fancy weapons when he did that. And so instead, David says, you know what? I appreciate the offer. I'm good. You stay. You keep your armor. You keep all that. I'm just going to take what I know. I'm going to take my slingshot and pebbles and little rocks and I'm going to, and God is on my side. And I know he's going to follow through. Now, I love looking at this story and seeing how brave David is to, you know, show up to this battlefield where all these hardened soldiers, these people who'd been through so much, weren't willing to face it. People with battle experience and fighting experience didn't want to face Goliath. And just this shepherd boy did. And so sometimes when we read this story, we think, man, you know, David has no fear. He has no fear. He is, he's always been confident. He's always been brave. He's never had to think twice about something. But I'm actually willing to bet that maybe David was afraid. But he remembered who was on his side. He remembered that God had gotten him through so many things already. He remembered that, you know, in those fields when it seemed like his family had abandoned him and didn't care about him, he remembered who was with him, who was on his side. And that was God. And so maybe he was afraid. But then I think he remembered that God was on his side. And he was angry that Goliath was taunting God's people and taunting his God. And so he was going to show that. He was going to show the Philistines that God is the true king for them. That God is powerful. And that we don't have to be afraid. I, I'm willing to bet David overcame some fear. Because being brave doesn't necessarily mean that you're never afraid. You know, it's the same thing, like maybe there are some things in your life that you've done that at first you were afraid to do them. Like maybe getting on a roller coaster for the first time. You're scared while you wait in line, but you decide to be brave, go on the roller coaster, and then you love it. Or, you know, there are lots of things. You know, when, when you're younger, maybe you're scared of dogs. There's lots of things that, we can be, that we've been scared of that we've overcome. And so, you know, I don't want us to think that David is just this... He's this perfect guy who's never been afraid and, uh, you know, he did great and I could never be David. You could be David. You could be brave like him. And so David goes up to Goliath. He takes just, he, he, people must have thought he was crazy. He didn't take a sword, didn't take that armor, took his slingshot and rocks, goes up to Goliath. And I want you to hear what he says. And so this is in 1 Samuel Chapter 17, and this is verse 45. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. The day of the Lord, this day that the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So not only does David go up to fight Goliath, who's nine feet tall, huge, this giant, he also says, look, you fight with sword and stuff. I didn't bring that, but I brought something more powerful, and that's God on my side. That's the Lord Almighty, and he doesn't fight with swords and spears, but the battle is already his. He already has won. It just takes someone to be brave. Just takes someone to be brave and trust in God. God made David brave. 
If he was fighting on his own, he probably would have been scared to death. But, but David remembered that God was on his side and that God made him brave. And, you know, David is even, I'm sorry if this gets a little gruesome, but David even says, look, I'm going to cut off your head. He says, remember, David is this shepherd boy, right? And so he says to this giant, nine foot tall guy, I guess, nine foot tall giant. And he says, I'm going to cut off your head. And the Israelites are going to win this battle. And God is going to remain victorious. And people are going to know that our God is powerful all around the world because of what happens here today. And I mean, you probably already know how it ends, but David does it. With just his slingshot and his rocks, he takes down Goliath. And he cuts off his head. And then the Israelite army fights the Philistines and they win. And people hear about it. People hear about, man, do you hear about that? That guy, David, who fought that giant Goliath? He didn't even take a sword with him. How did he win? What happened? Oh, well, his God was on his side. Oh, well, if his God's that powerful, maybe he's worth looking into. Maybe he's worth hearing about, learning about more. The cool thing is that David didn't do this for his own glory. He didn't do this so people would hear about his name all throughout the world. He did it so that people would know that God is powerful and almighty and he will always win. And so maybe you're facing something that you need a little bravery. Maybe life is tough and you're facing a giant battle of your own at school, at home, wherever. But I want you to remember that on our own, we'll fail maybe, we'll be afraid. But God makes us brave. And if we remember that God is on our side, you'll get through this trouble, this giant trouble. My family's going through it right now too. It's tough. But it's important to remember that God doesn't leave us alone and that he gives us the bravery to face things. I love David and Goliath. It's one of my favorite stories. It's a classic in the Bible, in kids' church, you know. But I just want to remind you, like, David wasn't some crazy, powerful, amazing guy. David was like you and me. David was a shepherd boy. It was just a normal thing. People actually thought lower of him because he was a shepherd. Maybe you feel like you're kind of dismissed in your family or your friend group too. David did great things for God, and so can you. Because God made him brave, and God can make you brave too. So thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate this. I know the video went a little long, but I just love David and Goliath. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to uh, make some more videos for you guys. And I will be posting again next week. So thank you for tuning in. And uh, remember that God makes you brave this week.